Yeah, welcome to the painting, first painting builder video uh, of how to paint uh, GameStayStandard.org. Um, today we will focus on um, green skin and uh, the following video will cover uh, topics like um, real metal and also weathering. So you've already um, prepared a little bit? Yeah, as you can see um, some of the um, uh, lower elements are already painted. Um, we also uh, already did the base. Mm -hmm. so look, that looks uh, pretty much uh, like the same as we did on the DVD, right? On yeah, it's, a, earth. it's like a very nice uh, desert-like base with cracked earth. Mm -hmm. Here you can see um, the, the orc is um, also painted in dark brownish tones, um, some sand tones, so it m uh, matches the, the desert-like base. Mm -hmm. Um, most of the elements uh, we like, like the metal plates, um, we find also on the back. So uh, I already painted those. And it's actually very simple, right? It's just yeah, yeah. I, I basically just highlighted the pants in that uh, sand color, and mm. then uh, took some very thin color and painted the camo dots on. Okay. So if uh, if you guys want to see how to do this, maybe in a future video, let us know in the comments, and we could add that. Definitely. As it's always important to have a lot of small details and the, the figure itself is uh, not that detailed. Mm -hmm. um, I've added some that are just painted on, like um, you can see the t-shirt the with the belly button here. Mm -hmm. um, stuff like that is really important if you want to take the miniature to, to a, like a, like a new level mm -hmm. of detail. So basically um, the t-shirt is not, on, not sculpted on the miniature, you painted that yourself? Yeah. Okay. And uh, then there's two more things to uh, talk about on this miniature. First of all, uh, the arms are not attached. Yeah, um, I have the arms separate. Um, here's the one with the gun and uh, the, this is the other one. Mm -hmm. um, I uh, left it separate because uh, I like to have like more space to paint and go in there and paint the details. I know a lot of that will be covered with the gun, mm -hmm. uh, but nevertheless, uh, sometimes you can just look in there and if it's not painted. Yeah, it's, it's much easier to actually uh, paint it like this. Uh, it, oftentimes you say when the eye can see it, the brush can touch it, but it's not It's not always that easy, no, no, <laughs> definitely. Uh, also areas like under the, the big chin, uh, it's just hard to, to reach with the gun just here. And then the last thing, there are some very simple conversions on this yeah. uh, miniature of we, that uh, Orc Burner Boy. Yeah, we kept it quite simple. So uh, we have like a small chimney on the back with a Kind of, kind of like a street sign, mm -hmm. um, and also we, we cut away the the belts up here yeah. that they're uh, attached to the gun, because uh, also they're just blocking a lot of the the miniature, mm -hmm. and we will add that later on with green stuff. Here you can see we add uh, some some wrapping around here. So that was basically just a smooth. Um, yeah, it's, it there. was was just like that part here. Right. Okay. So uh, I've added that as a little detail, um, just from a thin a roll of green stuff. Okay. And some wire around here. Yeah. And again, if that's something you're interested in, uh, let us know. Uh, we're doing everything with voting from now on. Yeah. Uh, it's actually, it's uh, interesting for us as well. All right. So uh, I would say let's start with the face. Okay. So uh, we will start with the first layer of a pretty dark um, base color. You can see, if you're not familiar to that, we, we uh, co uh, base coated the figure black and white to have like a first sketch for the light. Mm -hmm. So the light is just straight from the top. So basically just uh, first you do it completely with black, yeah. covered with black, and then uh, from the top and a little bit around the top with the white. Mm -hmm. All right, we start today pretty dark. Uh, usually I like to uh, start with a mid-tone, but in this case, because the, the face is quite small, um, to, to have a good contrast from the start, uh, I'll go with the dark color and then just go for a bright highlight straight away. Mm -hmm. um, this is a, a color from scale 75, it's uh, called Ardennes Green. Okay. You can see it covers quite well, right? Yeah, it covers quite well, but uh, the foundation shines uh, through a little. Mm -hmm. Mm 
And of course, you can use any kind of color if you have uh, Games Workshop uh, colors or uh, Vallejo or whatever. You yeah. find the right tones. Definitely. Um, I uh, went for green that is not too saturated. So, um, um, yeah, it's not like like a, a Dark Angels green or something. So it's more uh, more flat. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we let that dry and uh, um, just repeat it one more time with a thinner layer. So you're just making sure that that it covers really well, that you don't see any like white spots or anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that you don't see the grain of the foundation anymore. Okay. Right, so you got uh, two layers of paint on there. Mm -hmm. You used a, a hair dryer to dry it quickly. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, especially when you go for a thin layer and it's quite diluted. It's nice to just use the blow dryer to dry it in between. Yeah. Okay, so uh, for the uh, first highlights, I will uh, start with the thin layer of the same color that we did before. Um, and then take the color that I want for the highlight. It's a Sherwood green. It's more intense and uh, a lot more vibrant. Mm -hmm. And place it here on the upper part of the cheek. And while this is still wet, I'll uh, also add some um, pale yellow tone. So quite a, quite a strong highlight. Mm. Um, I'll go uh, stronger first and then I can uh, still correct it with um, thin glazes of the middle tone. Mm. But especially on a face like that, it's nice to, to give it like a real uh, 3D look with yeah. a lot of contrast. And uh, contrast maximization is really something that's also important for showcase miniatures, right? Yeah. I mean, it's also important when you have like an army and you mm. because you see it from a lot far of more far away. Uh, so it's like more one meter, two meters, and the army really looks flashy with a lot of contrast. Mm. But you have to rethink contrast for for a gaming miniature. So this here is more more uh, fine, more subtle. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, contrast is really important. It makes the figure stand out of the, of the mass of uh, figures in a showcase. Okay, so this is just a glaze of the highlight color. And yeah, maybe, of course, there's a lot of people probably watching that don't are not familiar with these terms. A glaze is a, is a um, paint that is very diluted. So if you were to put it on a piece of paper, it's, it's almost uh, translucent a little bit. Yeah. So highlight up here. And again, with this still wet, some of the tenere yellow. The technique that Ben uses, and I know not, not everybody has seen the, the almost sold out, or probably, probably by the time we show this sold out season 1.1, but uh, the um, technique you're using is a wet and wet technique. And uh, wet and wet really means that uh, the surface that you're painting on has to be a little wet. And because you are blending the colors on the wet paint, and uh, that's why you will see Ben uh, always applying the base color again, so that the surface is wet, then he puts uh, the highlight colors on, and then he just blends it out a little bit, feathers it out a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, I love that technique because it's a rather fast technique, and uh, you really see what you're doing in, 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 a, just in a second, mm. and then you can correct it with layers and glazes. If all goes well, that means that you have um, almost the perfect result right away. And if it's not, then you have a good starting point to yeah, yeah, correct yeah. it. Mm -hmm. And because the, the paint is uh, thin, you can just uh, add another uh, wet and wet on top and mm -hmm. another one. And 
you do not have to be afraid to smear it all and lose all the details. Mm. Mm. Some base color. So just the same color as before. Yeah. Make it wet. So a little of the highlight color. And a little of the yellow. It's just really the tip of the brush there. It already is much more three-dimensional than before, just with a few strokes. Yeah, I mean it looks quite harsh here, but mm. we will refine that bit by bit. Okay, so some middle tone. And that's a glaze again, right? Uh, it's a little thicker. Okay. Some highlights on that small, small stubby nose. Added some white to my highlight color to have like a really strong light up on the nose. Um, while painting those small highlights here on the sides, I tried to leave like a small darker line to have like small wrinkles around the eyes. Mm -hmm. Ah yeah, I can't see it really well. It's really this little, or th th this, these kind of details really that make a difference between a well-painted miniature and like a showcase miniature, isn't it? Yeah, and I think it, it also adds a lot to the sculpt if you add Small details because especially with plastic miniatures, mm. they're often they're quite uh, quite flat and in, in texture. Yeah. So just to maybe uh, repeat that, you could put the base color on two layers, maybe three, depending on how thick your paint is. Um, with your wet and wet technique, you always make the surface wet before mm -hmm. you apply the other colors. Uh, you put down the first highlight color. And then you put on some stronger highlights, blend it a little bit, and that's how you get to that result. Yeah, and then, then I just refine it with a little glazes of the middle tone to, to, to get like a, a smoother finish. Okay. Okay. So you want to do the rest of the face? Yeah, okay, I'll, con I'll then... continue with that and we'll be back for the shadows. Alright, looking good. Yeah, we've... Uh... I've done the highlights just uh, as I did on that side, uh, here uh, on this part and also on the uh, front of the head because um, the back of the head will be later pretty much covered with his mask. Ah, yeah. So uh, we don't need uh, too much highlight here because we will have more shadow over there. That's already good contrast, but it's not. Yeah, it's a, yet, right? especially in faces, you need more colors to play with mm -hmm. um, to, to get a lot of in interest to that area. Mm -hmm. So, uh, speaking of which, we will start with a uh, nice contrasting shadow color. Um, it will be a hull red from the Model Air range mm -hmm. um, with a little bit of black. Okay. 
one of the uh, properties of the scale 75 colors is that they're very matte, which is uh, great for many, many purposes. But uh, sometimes it's also helpful if you have a different um, uh, finishing on the surfaces. Yeah. And that's, uh, for example, the um, model air colors have a little more satin finish to them. Mm -hmm. And that also cr creates some contrast in the quality of the surface. Yeah, definitely. Um, also, it's nice to, it kind of enriches the, the whole volumes because you have like a, a small reflex in the shadows. Mm. So if uh, someone asks, uh, what is the best color? There's really no best color, is there? There's yeah. just, uh, you need different paints for different uh, purposes. Definitely, and you always have to look how the uh, colors dry and uh, what effect you really want. Oops, there's a little hair something to clean it off with a, Just a some clean water. Brush. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'll continue with the dark color uh, in the areas like the mouth and also cover the lips because I want them uh, to be more in a brown tone in the end. And that's another thing that uh, you're not using black for that. Uh, a lot of people would just uh, paint the mouth black and then add some white on that. It's not not the best way to do it, is it? No, um, black is just too, too hard. Mm. And it's also a little boring because uh, when the, the, like here you have a little overlapping of the red, brown and green, and it's still a nice warm dark green. Mm. And with black it would be just, just too, too, yeah, just black. So uh, <laughs> yeah, the brown is, is quite nice for that. Yeah. Also it looks more natural. Then just with the clean brush, fade it out a little to the sides. Mm. I think it's amazing how much uh, contrast is added by just the, that very dark red brown. Yeah. Um, we'll also cover those elements here. Mm -hmm. What color will they be in the end? Um, I think I'm going for for metal. Okay. I'm just uh, using the dark brown here to hit the recesses around the, uh, the the flesh here. Ah, okay. And also now I can just pull the shadow here towards the cheek and have like the the maximum color here already. Yeah. So I can just push the yeah uh, push the pigments there in that direction. Yeah. So same on the other side. Yeah, I really like the shirt. It just uh, it's really nice. Yeah, I tried to also add a little detail like the the small lines on the shirt mm. to have like <laughs> like that real uh, undershirt look. Yeah, reminds me a little bit of that uh, Nocturna. What's the, what's the name? Battle chick. Yeah. <laughs> the shirt? True. Sure. She, uh, she looks a little more attractive than the orchid. Yeah, a little. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you have to be very careful when you uh, book around the, the eyes. Mm -hmm. So you don't want the, the thin uh, brown here to just run in there. see here it got a little on there I think it's not too bad I'll add some purple in the eye area later so mm. this is quite okay I tried to uh, also add some lines like wrinkles here on the upper lip mm -hmm. you can also see how Ben uh, uses his little finger to just uh, the, the pinky just to stabilize his brush because that is obviously very delicate work.
Okay, here uh, I just went a little too much over the line. Um, I will just correct with the highlight color. So, some highlight color. Okay, so a bit bright, so mm -hmm. I need to adjust it to the wrinkles next to them. I Actually, like I, li I like it that bright. Yeah, yeah, I like that bright as well. So, so I'll, you're gonna I'll adjust to the other wrinkles as well. Yeah, yeah. Happy little mistakes. Again, this is a good example. It's like putting just a really tiny amount of paint up then cleans the brush and just feathers it out with a basically just wet brush. I think already that looks quite good for the shadows. Mm -hmm. I think uh, I should increase it here on the back of the head a little and uh, readjust that. But I think it's pretty much the same as, uh, as I did it here. Mm -hmm. So I think the more interesting part now would be some different color glazes uh, around areas like the nose or the, uh, the eyes. Mm -hmm. I mix some of the shadow color, the color red, with uh, some purple. Yeah, it's violet from scale 75. And I mix it with some of the uh, dark green. Mm -hmm. So basically the, the brown and the green you already used before, and now you're adding the purple. Yeah. So I just place it in the, in the eye area. I don't want it to be too vibrant. Mm -hmm. It just gives a little uh, hue, like a little um, it's something that you s that you recognize, but you don't really recognize it like right away. It just adds more interest and more nuances to the to the face. Yeah. Also, it's nice because it, here that the red here is also quite purplish mm. because I use a lot of black in the shadows, and that pulls the things even together with the face. Mm. I think that's probably a very important uh, tip as well if you're doing your own projects, don't make them too colorful, like uh, using every color that you have <laughs> just to show off that you have all of the, the whole color set. <laughs> so you're always using um, what, what's called limited palette, right? Yeah, I try to. I like to have like colorful nuances, mm. but uh, don't go... Like these colors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so use the same colors and all the parts and continue to continue the colors all over the project. Yeah. Now I'm adding some white to the to the purplish mix and highlight the, the wrinkles here. Yeah we lost those a little bit in the process didn't we? Yeah. Also it's nice to 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 get it back with the purple in there. You see, it's just a very, very tiny highlight, but it just works very well because of the very dark areas next to it. Yeah, you need really contrast for when you add like the, those small details, like the wrinkles, because um, that makes it look really 3D. Mm. For that, uh, the, the bigger lower lip, um, we'll add uh, some of that red. And on the hull red. And I'm not putting the highlight all over the lip, but uh, just some small vertical lines to, to have like a like a dry lip look. Mm.
We are adding the maximum highlight on the lip. I tried to hit the same line again. Yeah. So you need a little bit of control there. It's not hard to do it, but it's easy to mess up. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I really like the the texture at Naga. Um, I will try to glaze a highlight over it, so we have a mixture between the vertical lines and mm. the small horizontal highlight. Just thin down the white a bit more. So it's like adding a transparent layer on top of what you've just done. Yeah, to pull uh, them a bit together in mm. the, just in the very middle. Adding a thin layer of the, the base color will also help to just uh, soften it out again because mm -hmm. now it's quite white. I think I should finish the uh, shadows of cam and we'll be back for uh, elements like the cigar and the tooth. Okay, cool. Okay, so here we are with the shadows completed. Uh, you can see I've added, just to, to add some extra details, I've added some scratches here, like small uh, wounds. Mm -hmm. um, we'll show that on the arm. It's just another small and easy detail. Okay. Um, we'll continue with the last details on the face, like the eyes, the teeth, and the cigar. Okay, cool. For the uh, red of the eyes, we will take um, some Blood red from scale color. Mm -hmm. um, just a very bit on the tip because the the eyes are very deep in that eye socket. So just to not smear everything with the red, make sure to just have it on the very tip. And this the same red we've used also for the um, for the loin cloth. Mm -hmm. I've hit the eyelid here, the upper eyelid. Mm -hmm. We'll correct that once I've added the, the light reflex. Okay, and even more tiny bit on the tip of the brush, some white for some reflex in the eye. Mm -hmm. I really like the the way they pop out now. Mm -hmm. And the red again gives a good uh, color contrast. It's the contrast to green, mm -hmm. so that again it maximizes contrast on the on the uh, color level in this in this instance. Okay, and some of that purple green mix to to correct the upper eyelid. Mm -hmm. Okay. Quick and easy. Yeah. Just need to have a steady hand. <laughs> In, indeed. So um, next thing would be the teeth. We'll mix some brown with uh, some yellow, the pale yellow. It's a little bit like a flesh tone now. Shouldn't be too too close to a flesh tone. So I might need some add, need to add some brown to the palette because uh, this here is quite skinny mm. so, uh, from the tone. So. I need something more 
brown brown. I've added some Dubai brown to the palette to have a more um, real brown brownish brown and not too much skin color like. So we will start with that as a base color for our teeth. Yeah, teeth is something I always had problems with with painting, whether it's teeth or tusks or these kind of thing. I don't know why they always turn out too white. Yeah, it's important to, to keep the white just for the highlight there as well and not do them all white mm. or start with the white. A lot of people start with white for, for teeth and then try to glaze them down mm. and that's often too bright. For the highlight, I'm mixing some tenere yellow in there. Also some white. And I now try again, uh, like with the wrinkles, try to just leave little dark lines there towards towards the towards the lid. Okay, and now some white to the tip of the not really clean brush, so I have some of the color remaining in there. I might need to get the stripes back here a little. And maybe you can see it up here. I just uh, the highlight was a little bit too big here. I need to line it a bit. Uh huh. Yeah. So again, just a very tiny uh, line you just made there, but again, it maximizes the contrast in this area. You have the yeah. really dark brown next to the white. And I will also, now I will have to, because the line is a little thick towards the lip, mm. want to correct that, because uh, otherwise it looks too cartoony because it's uh, too strong, strongly lined. Mm. I will mix some of the shadow color with some of the dark green that we've started with and try to just uh, cover the area, area between those two. Just oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's much better. All right, so next thing would be the cigar. We will use the same uh, brown for the uh, highlight on the cigar. See, I wonder what happened with this other tooth there, with this tusk. Did, yeah, did he have that removed just so he can smoke a cigar? Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's good. totally addicted to smoking cigars on That's Battlefield. <laughs> and while this is wet, some white. It looks like real nice uh, Cuban cigar kind of color, <laughs> doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, cigar brown. <laughs> I'll add some black to the front. I want to darken it up to the to the front so it looks looks a little burned. Yeah. And um, therefore I just stipple a little with the wet brush. To 
works. So, yeah, you put you put the color on there, you clean the brush, and now you're just kind of dabbing on it and just pulling a, a little over the edge. Yeah. yeah. Which makes it automatically a little um, transparent, the black. Yeah. And it looks like a burnt and yeah, like a burnt cigar, really. Which it is. So. <laughs> okay. Uh, I like the effect mm -hmm. quite a lot. Um, I think I want little line of like where the tobacco have rolled mm. on the cigar so uh, the black is a lot thinner now i try to stabilize the figure as much as it's, as possible Might be a little hard to see, um, but I will add a, a small light reflex just next to it. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a lot easier to see after that. And then some small dots to, to have a more textured look. To have the front of the cigar uh, like brightly uh, glooming, um, I will add some of the metal uh, pigments, mm -hmm. uh, some of the white alchemy from the scale color. Okay. Um, to have it like a bit, little bit more shiny than the white reflex. Cool. And again, just small dots. But that's really interesting that you're using. Uh metal there and after that we just glaze over it with uh, some some orange um, orange ink or uh, some uh, even some Tamiya clear orange mm -hmm. to, to give it a little bit more uh, color to it because right now it's just white yeah but you can see it works quite nice because it's a really bright reflex cool okay uh, I just have some orange paint here on the on the uh, on my wet palette, uh, it's a Kalahari orange. It might not be the perfect color for that, but uh, I think it should should work. Could you also use like uh, glow paint there? The, uh, not glow, but this highly reflective kind of. Yeah, the the day uh, day glow pigments or the mm. fluorescent. Fluorescent, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it works quite good good with those as well. Uh, also, the combination of uh, metal medium and the uh, the uh, glowing pigments could turn on really nice. Mm -hmm. I'm just uh, adding a little uh, shadow on the to to get a separation line between the upper lip and the cigar and then I think we should be good with that and just add a highlight on that black belt up there. Mm -hmm. And again I pulled the shadow color a lot into the color of the cigar to have not just a blank line there. Mm -hmm. Okay, for the um, strap around his head, for, for his uh, mask, we'll just again put some fresh black color on there. And I want the reflex to be here, also to match the highlight there. Mm -hmm. Some white to the tip of the brush, that was a little too much, just quickly wipe it off.
and then blend it to the sides. And again, that's necessary for the wet and wet. You're just creating the same back, uh, background color as before. Uh, in this case, black. Uh, make the surface wet. As you can already see, the blending really turns out very, very nicely and quickly. Um, if you do this, did this with the layering technique, it would just take much, much longer. Yeah. And it's as I said, it's not perfect, but it's a good starting point. Mm -hmm. Now you're a pretty fast painter. You're probably one of the. I wouldn't say the fastest painters, but one of the faster painters out there, right? Yeah, rather fast, yeah. Yeah, yeah I like the, that moment when you just finish a figure nice and easy and don't start to, to go crazy about everything. Just start it and finish it and have, have a look at the finished pro project. It's a, it's a <laughs> nice feeling of having something done. Fin finishing a miniature nice and easy and quickly. Oh, that's something I wouldn't know anything about. So. <laughs> <laughs> so I just continue with the highlight around with the side of the brush. So when you're working uh, for competition, let's say this, uh, as, I mean, we're doing this as a competition level piece already. And obviously it's a little, little different because uh, when you're working at home, you don't have cameras in your face and uh, you can uh, move six, as closely six, as you Six want. lights and they can it's, turn the figure, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and some guy talking to you the whole time. But um, if I'm mistaken, if I say that you would uh, easily be able to finish a miniature like this in a day, In that standard here, a day at home would be, would be I think, a good average. Mm. Um, I mean, if I would do it for a competition, I think uh, I would spend around 20 hours for, okay. for a single figure. 25 that, that's maybe. including the base and everything, yeah. right? Yeah. So, yeah, you see that bright highlight there. Mm -hmm. I think it's really nice. gives a nice dynamic to the, all the wrinkles on the, on yeah. the face. And that's a very quick introduction to non-metallic metal right there. <laughs> that's amazing. You have metal on the cigar and non-metallic <laughs> metal on the metal. So, <laughs> cool. So that would conclude the first part. Yeah. All right. And um, I hope you enjoyed the show so far. Mm -hmm. um, I think it will look a whole lot different when we don't have the the um, black and white primed things in the back. But uh, that's uh, for part two of the video. Okay. Cool. And uh, if you have any comments or questions, uh, just post them in the uh, comment section under the blog, if possible, mm -hmm. because there's so many different places where people <laughs> can post, and so it's hard to kind of assemble them all. Yeah. But uh, yeah, if you if you like this, let us know and um, tell your friends about it. Um, we want to do more of these in the future, and um, if you get a lot of uh, votes on the next couple of projects, uh, we definitely continue this. Yeah. Also, it's uh, so important to get your feedback to and your questions. Uh, and if you're fast enough, we can also answer them in the next video. So yep. thanks a lot for that. All right, cool.